Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm your host, Nikki Backerel D'Angelo. Wow, that was an interesting week. Multiple patches inside the EPTU getting ready for the release of 4.0. And even better, Wave 2 has begun. I've really wanted to show you more footage of 4.0. The EPTU is a fun and beautiful place, but it's also dangerous. The EPTU is riddled with bugs, graphical glitches, and people that are unchecked for the first time. And it's very difficult to get around without having combat just organically begin. So while graphical glitches and bugs will be fixed, and hopefully the virus that has been infected all elevators is corrected, you're always going to have this certain group of people, which I believe need to exist inside of the universe, but they are going to be in the EPTU and then in 4.0, and their main goal is just going to be to disrupt, to have fun by taking out anybody that comes within their sights. And this is what Star Citizen is supposed to be in Lawless Zones, and I do support that. So the big thing right now seems to be Master Modes. Master Modes grew out of the excessive amount of keybinds that we have in the game and all the different game loops and all the different things that you have to do inside your ship. CIG originally made this game for mouse and keyboard and HOTUS, but the number of keybinds has outgrown even the most advanced HOTUS systems. I have a Gladiator and the Gladiator Throttle and have buttons galore all over those two devices and still don't have enough buttons, so I have my Stream Deck that I set up with more buttons, still not enough. Master Modes alleviates the frustration by allowing you to share keybinds across multiple Master Modes. So my best take on the controversy is not about Master Modes coming or going. It's about combat in Star Citizen. In the beginning, when we first started to have combat in the game, ships were capable of incredible speeds. Combat became nothing more than high-speed jousts and very frequently would end with you crashing into your opponent. CIG nerfed this type of combat and turned it into a much lower engagement speed, forcing you to be in the 100 to 300 SCM speeds. Might have been a little bit more than that, but that was where we were. And Boost and Afterburner were played with after that with limited fuel and so on and we've had iteration after iteration of combat since. CIG sees combat in this game like they see combat in a World War II simulator. If you've seen Red Tails or Masters of the Air, you know the combat that they're looking for. Having been away for a while and not engaging in combat in most of my gameplay, I didn't live through some of the different iterations, but most recently, we were forced to have an iteration of this combat model where you would have to move into a different mode to escape. And that mode, navigation mode or quantum mode, would take down your shields and give you access to incredible speed. So the flight or fight mechanic turned into a fight or die mechanic. Now there's one thing I know. CIG will iterate on this over and over again until 1.0 is live. And then they'll iterate on that until it is perfect in their eyes. And it's going to frustrate us because every time they change it, we have to learn every one of our combat ships all over again. We also go back to the drawing board on the loadouts for our ships. This is so important that they get it right, but it's also, like I said, very frustrating for the rest of us. One thing that does make me a little bit cautious about combat in Star Citizen is that if we look at World War I and World War II, it was always our airmen that had the lowest life expectancy in battle. And that's what I see happening over time in Star Citizen. Which is probably why hauling and salvaging and mining and mercenary missions are so popular. That's my take on Master Modes. Now, I do believe that they are very important but combat really needs to be fixed. And there needs to be a different risk versus reward for people that engage in it. Even with the mushy AI that we have right now, as that gets upgraded in the future, combat is always going to have high risk. And I hope in the future that brings with it high reward. Other things are changing in the verse at the same time. We have new combat armors, 
and we have new missions inside of the EPTU. Hauling missions went active just recently, but something else in the background is actually changing. So let's preface this by saying that you have an extremely large star system in Pyro. For the last decade, we've been in Stanton, which is a huge star system, but it's still so small, it probably would never exist in real life. And while Cloud Imperium Games is trying to bring us things that border on real life, there's some things that they have to change for gameplay. And that's how far away things are and how long it takes to get from A to B. For the last few months, your quantum drive only differentiated itself by the speed at which it cooled down. Well, total full differentiation on your quantum drives is now back. So as you get back into the game, start playing with those because they will be instrumental in making your time in Pyro fun, exciting, and not a time sink. It could take minutes to tens of minutes to get from one end of Pyro to the other. And although you'll probably be setting up shop in a certain area, having a great quantum drive is going to be very important for your ship and your gameplay. All right, I'm going to start doing testing on those later. But for now, all I want to say is thank you. Thank you all for coming back to my channel, for watching my videos, and thank you all for the wonderful comments you've been leaving. I really enjoy doing these videos, and I'm doing my best to start setting up for streaming to begin right after the holidays. Until then, I'm just too tired when I get home. I am doing a lot more driving than I used to. So enough of the complaints. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below so it can help the algorithm tell people that this might be a good video to watch. And if you are new or a previous subscriber, click the bell-shaped icon below so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.